The Houston Astros are one win away from clinching another ALDS and returning to the fifth ALCS, and they have chosen Lance McCullers, the Iceman, to take the mound. Not Jose Arquiti. They're going in for the kill. They're going to take this series and see if they can take on the Red Sox or the Rays. This is Locked on Astros. Check us out, and here we go. Welcome to Locked On Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H Town Wheelhouse Chancy. We are Locked On Houston Astros, and we hope that you join us for a daily Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. You find me on Twitter at Eric Talk Astros. Find the show at Locked On Astros, your team every day. Brett, where can you find you at? They can find me at H-Town Wheelhouse on Twitter and Astros411 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Always positive, always Stros. And guys, keep on making us your first listen every day, whether that's in your car, you can listen to us on Spotify, Odyssey, Apple, wherever you listen to your, your podcast, you can listen to uh, the Locked On Astros podcast. And don't forget, we are on YouTube as well, so make sure you go subscribe to us there. You can go ahead and give us a like. I, I know that uh, we're get, we're getting a whole bunch of likes over there, but definitely subscribe and definitely watch our videos over there because uh, y'all are doing a great job and we're doing a great job. And it's a great uh, feeling to have all the support we're having from uh, Locked On Astros Nation. And speaking of that, this episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. It's amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Visit rockauto.com and tell them that Locked On sent you by. So we were supposed to have a ball game today. It was kind of disappointing. I mean, we're supposed to have Jose Arquiti versus Carlos Rondon, and it just it didn't happen. Mother Nature decided that, hey, we're not going to have a ball game today. And MLB, to its credit, said, uh, canceled what? It was almost two hours ahead yeah. of time. So you didn't have pitch, starting pitchers start to warm up. or Well, I guess they couldn't warm, warm up if the, if the rain was coming down. But they, they canceled in enough time where they're able to make plans. But this also did put a little interesting scenario for the Astros. Do you go with Jose or Kitty? And for a uh, closeout, a p- potential closeout game four, which would have happened today, or do you bring back Lance McCullers on uh, on a regular rest, or do you save Lance McCullers for a do or die game five at home a situation? And Dusty Baker decided to go with uh, let, let's go ahead and bring Lance McCullers. He's our ace. He's the guy that you need to uh, bring in this situation. He's on regular rest. Why not? If not, we'll have a. We'll just go ahead and have Ramon Valdez pitch Game Five at home if needed. I, I I'm not giving you my. I'm gonna give you my thoughts. But what do you what do you think about this, Brett? So I was I was kind of surprised. I thought they would go with their Keedy to save Lance McCullers. That way, he is able to pitch Game One of the ALCS. But if you go to a Game Five, more than likely you pitch Lance McCullers there. Um, the thing is, though. If you go with Framber in Game Five, um, then you also, if there is a Game Five, then you also don't have him or Lance to start one of the first two games. So I think Urquidy would go in Game Five if that were the case. I like the idea of Urquidy going, but I understand your guy going in for the kill, LMJ Day. He's got ice in his veins. Who else do you want on the mound, right? Um, I think the Astros are putting all their chips in game four and they're counting on flying home to Houston, Texas with an ALDS title and a fifth straight trip to the ALCS. You can't fault them. I think a lot of people thought that maybe they would go Urquidy um, because if you can win with Urquidy, then Lance has got full rest game one starter, like I said, ALCS. Uh, Are you sure about that? You know, when the ALCS will start. It would start on Friday. Right. So if he doesn't pitch, then he would, he would, he would be able, he would be on full rest is what I'm saying. Right. So right now he pitches, he pitches on, he pitches on Tuesday. He's not going to be able to pitch till game three, I believe in the, in the ALCS. 
Okay. All right. Yeah. I just want to make sure we're clear on that. So yeah, uh, this is kind of a bold move by Dusty Baker. And then if you have to go to game five, then you have to go ahead and burn from, from Rivaldez. Then who do you got going in game one of ALDS? It's going to be um, Luis Garcia. And then are, are you going to be at home or are you going to be on the road? And Luis Garcia is a better at home than he is at the road. So that's a, another situation. And we still haven't pitched Jose Urquidy. So I, I think that I you think you would go. Urquidy yeah, or, I, th I think I think Urquidy would be the smarter move because you don't want to burn your top two guys in the last two games. If you win that game five because you lost game four, we hope that doesn't happen. But, you know, right now, as we're doing the podcast, it's the next day there is a declared winner, but it's bottom of the seventh and it's five to three Boston right now over Tampa. Wow. So people could be listening to this and know that we have home field advantage against the Boston Red Sox. And that's who I want the Astros to face because of the home field advantage. And imagine Lance McCuller starting on the road in game three in Boston. We've had success in Boston. Flip it. If, if the Rays extend this, then that maybe extends out the dates and maybe that changes when Lance would pitch. He may pitch at the trop. So we don't know. We're talking in the past. You were listening to us in the future. And so um, we will have that discussion the next podcast, hopefully after an Astros game four victory. This will be such a big up upset if the Red Sox uh, knock yeah. out the Rays. I mean, it's not a total, uh, total big, like I never saw it uh, happening, but the, the Rays had such a great season and they, they went did. out and got Nelson Cruz. They went out and improved their bullpen and they went out and did the typical non Rays moves. They won a hundred plus games for the first time in franchise history. And then they get knocked off by the Red Sox and the uh, Yankees were on this hot streak and they, and they got knocked off by the Red Sox. So maybe this Red Sox team is legit. Maybe this is a team that we shouldn't be wishing for. But I, hey, I still think I was, that I was, you know, I was actually thinking that. Like, like matchup wise, I think on paper, yeah. we would rather have the Red Sox. But if the Red Sox are super hot, but what an interesting twist. Joey Cora versus his former club. You know, again, I mean, hey. And better be watching those um those uh, iPads and Apple Watches over there in the Reds in the Red Sox dugout and they're and, and they're hide all your keepers. trash cans. That's what the hide, Red Sox be. Hide, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially the White Sox guys. Yeah, we will, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. Yeah, definitely. But, but yeah, this is a definitely an interesting matchup. Lance McCullers, he has been he's pitched really great against the White Sox this year. In fact, he uh, you can almost use the word dominated in three starts. This includes postseason and regular season. He's three and zero with a one point thirty seven ERA with a zero point seven one WHIP and uh, with eight hits and nineteen strikeouts in nineteen and two thirds innings. If you remember the last postseason game, he didn't strike out a lot of hitters, but he had total control of the White Sox lineup for six and two thirds innings. And that's what you want in a playoff game in this situation when, when you want to limit this offense. And I know uh, we'll talk about this in a second, but uh, the White Sox offense was stimmied in, uh, in Min May Park. And they then were. They, come, they come back to Chicago. I know it could have been the fans, all the black towels being waved. It could yeah. have been just the excitement of being back at home, the blackout, the strobes, everything happening. Oh, it was. And, yeah. And Grendel with his good base running and everything. <laughs> uh, the fact that um, I think there is a momentum shift in that game. And then uh, Brooks Raley and a whole bunch of other factors. Dusty Baker didn't help uh, taking uh, taking Luis Garcia out in the middle of a bat. I think a lot of things happened in that game to kind of shift the momentum back towards the White Sox. But we have to remember that the Astros did take that big lead. Uh, I think it was 5-1 to at one point, And then everything kind of fell apart. So, so I think the Astros still have a chance to go ahead oh. and knock this out. And tomorrow with Lance McCullers on mail. Easily. I think momentum, Eric, is a game by game thing. I don't think momentum carries over from one game to the next. I think there's too much time between each game. I just don't see. I think the only time momentum shifts in a game is, I'm, well, I mean, it didn't even do that with the Astros. Remember the Astros were down 0-3 against the 
Rays last year. They came back and they tied it. They got to a game seven. Well, you would think, oh, well, momentum, quote unquote, is in their favor going into game seven. It didn't matter. The Rays beat them. So momentum going from game to game, I don't think is so much a factor as momentum in the moment. Right. And Lance McCullers is the perfect guy to put on the mound. You and I have chronicled it. We've we said it probably at nauseum to our faithful listeners. He wants to be the guy to have the ball. He's going to have a chip on his shoulder. Also, don't you think that some of this bad juju is going to come back on the White Sox? Because right. they've always, even from spring training, Tim Anderson has talked smack about the Astros. They don't know when to shut their mouth. Yeah, it's like they don't have the right parts to for their their – shutting up the mouth. I don't know what the <laughs> phrase is, but speaking of which, let's go and talk about rockauto.com. Well, you know, the White Sox run their mouths like an old jalopy. And if you have an old jalopy and it's not running properly, go to rockauto.com. Your local chain store cannot carry all the parts they need. And unless you're a professional mechanic, you're not going to get the same price break that that guy does. You're an average Joe or Josephine like Eric and I want to bring in the ladies there because we know y'all can fix your car as well. There are all kinds of parts, thousands of parts, hundreds of makes and models. Basically, what you can do is when you go to rockauto.com, you spend 30, 50, sometimes 100% less than where you would just in a traditional auto parts store or even a dealership. Why go there? Why deal with the hassle? But we encourage you to discover all the valuable things that they have for you. They save you money. It's easy to find. The easily navigable website. They've got this great interface on their website as well. Go to rockauto.com and see all the parts that you need for your car or truck. Right locked on in their how did you hear about us box so that they know that we sent you. Amazing selection. Reliably low prices. All the parts your car will ever need. Rockauto.com. All right. I saw a TikTok about people who are it is what it is type people. And they're saying that they're people that uh, just have given up and they, they will accept anything. They don't care. They, they will say anything. And mm. that's what Ryan Tapera is apparently. And so, oh wow. Uh, um, so after this situation, after what the game yesterday, everybody's high with this victory. We beat the bad Astros. We're all um, victorious. We didn't even see this until right after we finished recording yesterday's podcast. And yeah. I'm like, man, <laughs> really, really, we couldn't have just waited a few more minutes, but this is what Tabera had to say. I mean, you know, it is what it is. They've obviously had a reputation of doing some sketchy stuff over there. We can say that, that it's a little bit of difference. I think you saw the swing and misses tonight compared to the first two games at Min Maid Park. So, uh, basically he, uh, he goes on and says some other stuff, but he's just basically saying that, uh, they're probably cheating at Minute Maid Park. And he, he kind of alluded to the fact that the Astros struck out 16 times in total in the first two games at Minute Maid Park. And then they st uh, struck out, um, what, 16 times yesterday or uh, in that, uh, the first game or something, whatever. The, the well, here's was. the thing. I've dude, I've I've got a counter. Do you do you want me to give you a counter to prove Mr. Tapera wrong? The Houstonian? Sure. Okay. So Mr. Tapera comes on and he's like, Oh, you know, see, here's the deal. Like, we know everything's suspect over there. When they come here, these all the swings and misses, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, big man, right? He wins one game and he's god of the planet. Then all of a sudden, if you look in Mr. Tapera's past, hey Mr. Tapera, I got a question for you, Mr. Houstonian. Before the sticky stuff banned, do you realize that your ERA was 1.82? Then after it was banned, it was 4.05. It's funny how that works. And you know what? Actually, the outlier here is y'all's production because the most runs you scored in Minute Maid was four runs. You come home and you score 12. You scored eight more runs than you did. The Astros scored six runs in game one and game three. Yeah, they scored nine in game two, but y'all's differential in runs scored at home compared to on the road actually makes the makes your product more suspect, makes it that maybe that old dude with the cane, maybe he was like stealing signals from the catcher. I don't know. I'm just saying it's pretty horrendous and pretty ridiculous that this has been like the narrative that you choose, Mr. Tapera. 
you choose this after you pitch your butt off, after your relief pitcher shut the Astros down after after the fourth inning, they don't get a single run, and this is what you go to, that's why y'all are going to lose. That's why the Astros are going to win. That's a loser mentality. You're always worried about what someone else is doing. And I rest my case. So, Mr. Tapera, um, sticky stuff, do you need some? Because apparently you suck without it. Thoughts by Dusty. He can say whatever he wants to say. I have never even heard his name before we played the White Sox. I'm not bothered by it. Most of my life, they've been talking stuff on me. Anyway, let them talk. And then uh, he goes on to say, those are some heavy accusations. We're about, let me pull up this one. Hold on. Let me start over. Those are some heavy accusations. We're about the same runs, OPS, and everything as we are. Uh, I think he's talking about home and splits. Right. We're actually better on the road than we are at home. I think they're actually better at home than they are on the road. I don't have much of a response to that than other than I was listening to Eric Clapton this morning. And he he had a song before you accuse me. You need to take a look at yourself. That's all I got to say about that. (laughs) Perfect. Of course, Gump. (laughs) <laughs> exactly. Perfect. Um, you know, Dusty Baker, as emotional as I was after the game about the many, I thought, coaching faux pas that he made with bringing in the pitchers at the wrong time and all that stuff. I I have praised him probably just as much as I've criticized him, but I do love his demeanor. And I've always said this. I'm not a manager. I don't have five division titles from five different teams. I I haven't coached Hall of Fame baseball players. I mean, you know, um, I've coached maybe one kid that's gone to the majors, but had had nothing to do with what I did. But I love Dusty's approach here. He basically bodies the guy, deflects it, and goes, I've never – it would have been funny if he said, I've never heard of her. (laughs) You know, kind of like they do online. But, in in, you know, Dusty goes, I don't even have social media. I don't even like, I don't even know what social media is. And so it, it it's, it's great. It was a great deflection. And Tapura, to his credit, was trying to make press, was trying to make headlines. He was trying to get people to talk about he him. He made it. He made ESPN. ESPN. Exactly. Headlines. Yeah. So oh, it, yeah. And, oh, and it was, dude. So we had a day where we were do- doing stuff in our room. So I pulled up MLB Network at, on my computer and four different stories ended up going to the white Sox. And the lead in was Ryan Tapera said, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, MLB network was running with it this morning. They were running with it. And, but you know, it's, cause it's the bad Astros, those mean Astros, the ones yeah. that cheated, um, what, three, four years yeah. ago. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like, um, it's like the, um, there was a tweet. Someone said, you know, steroids are cheating. Okay, boomer. And then all this other stuff. And they're like trash cans. And they're like, that is the worst thing that's ever happened in baseball. And it's just an old tired theme to me. If that's your only argument, like it, you just beat the Astros who manhandled your team in the first two games. I mean, you, you doubled up their run total. You scored 12 runs. Your city was on fire. It was electric. I would have loved to have been there, even as an Astros fan. It had to have been pandemonium, right? That's a great sports environment. And that's the thing you focus on. Right. That's why the White Sox are going to lose right there. That right there is a linchpin. That's going to break it off. That's bad juju. See you, Chicago. Go back to your couches. Uh, before I talk a little bit more about some Astro support to this, um, let's see what Tony Orso had to say about this. I don't think it's going to have any effect on the teams playing a game. When they said there's substance on the ball, there's always going to be something that's questioned. I think Major League Baseball looked into what's happening, and they're on top of it. That's why I don't get into it. I think it's tough enough to try to play against a team like Houston without getting distracted. So we try to concentrate. So he's basically saying, Shut up! <laughs> we It's already hard enough to pitch against these guys. You don't want to motivate them because if you're gonna if you're gonna motivate them, 
people like Jose Altuve, he he gets he gets his whole he gets his um, Popeye spinach, and he 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 gets his Popeye spinach, and he gets his big muscles, and then he that's when he starts hitting the home runs. And well, that's Carlos when Correa. Bregman, Correa, yeah. I mean, you're done. You know, that's the thing because Altuve's actually said the contrary. He's like, I'm not motivated by that. I'm motivated. I do it for the people who love me. But he gets all all more. You know, he gets more love lavished on him when they hear the booze. I still don't understand why, like, he's the lightning rod, why he's the one that they boo the most. It makes no, like, it makes right. no sense, right? Like, like, I understand. People see the buzzer. They, uh, they only look at the, I understand. the tattoo. They don't I care mean, about the whole cheating scandal. They, they, they're they focusing on, okay, well, if he didn't cheat with that, he, well, uh, we have, um, what's the guy's name? Um, John Boy. John Boy said that he had the whole buzzer thing. That's Actually, it was yeah, about. it was like Carlos Beltran's niece, I think, that started uh, that. That yeah. was that fake Twitter account. <laughs> yeah. So um, this is Alex Bregman on Dusty Baker standing up for the team. He said, I haven't been looking at my phone much, just been focusing on playing baseball. We didn't do enough to win yesterday. Turn the page. People can say whatever they want to say. And uh, apparently a lot of the uh, the White Sox pitchers were saying, oh, yeah, we pitched really great. We executed really great. And this is what Bregman had to say. Oh, They've got some really good pitchers. I could just see him saying, I'm going to try to say it with a smile. They <laughs> executed pitchers. They, sorry. They executed pitches and held us to six runs yesterday. <laughs> I, I could just see him saying that with a big smile, or maybe he did it totally uh, straight face. He but, could have been deadpan. I mean, that, that guy can have Bregman, that guy, Bregman can have like a dry sense of humor where like he's being serious, but he's totally like pulling your leg and yanking your chain. That's the thing. Like you said, Eric, you hit the nail on the head. Why would you give the other team more motivation? Now you've yeah. got Lance McCullers who don't piss this guy off. Right. right? I mean, w- w- dude, what if, what if machete goes off tomorrow, goes like two for three in a, in a home run. You know what well, I'm saying? I mean, not what Machete said, right? He said, it's yeah. always good to get the extra motivation. And Bregman continued yeah. by saying, it's all good. We're focused on winning games. So y- y'all can throw the trash. The Astros are just here to win. That That's all you want. Y'all can have the trash cans. The Astros are here to win. Keep on banging the trash can. We don't care. We're here if, to win. That's see, that- see, if I was on that team, I would find a trash can somewhere in the clubhouse and I would put it up on the steps next to the railing so that it could be seen visibly. I would definitely do that. Just <laughs> troll the hell out of the White Sox. You know what I'm saying? Just do it. Why not? You know? Yeah. So James uh, Click uh, had to say, he said, this is a very good White Sox team that we're up against and all our attention is focused on winning the series and nothing else. And he came out and said, there's absolutely nothing going on and uh you know after jeff luno and aj hench got fired that he's not about to let any of that crap happen and so i know there's been a lot of talk about well there's some teams out there that do a good job of relaying signs from second base that ain't illegal if if the actors are doing that then that ain't illegal so that's just that's just and wait wait that's good base running no, no, that that's good. Oh, that's right, that's right. That's not good well, base writing. That's good. Um, co- no, 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 not good coaching. That's good. Teamwork. That's good strategy. That's good yeah, strategy. Good strategy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the bottom line is, and I promise our listeners, we're not going to get into this whole like break this down again. But if you have a pulse and you use your brain to think, and you have paid attention to baseball, you know. Again, this doesn't excuse anything that ever happened with this club, but you know for a fact that they weren't the ones who invented it. It doesn't make it any any more right or less right, okay? It's still wrong. If you use mechanical devices to steal a sign like the 1951 World Series shot hurt around the world, and that whole series was altered by a guy with the telescope and using the scoreboard, the lights in the scoreboard, I mean, and then the Yankees using the very first television broadcast to steal signals, but yet this is the only thing that's talked about. Oh yeah, there you go, Eric. Um, if if you're listening, Eric's Eric sending me SOS signals from his phone. We need to do that, anyways. <laughs> this is the point. The Astros need to get this win. 
Lance McCullers. He is already a legend. He's yeah. going to be even more legend after this. And I say Lance McCullers after this season, Eric, um, becomes like you've, you've got to talk about retiring his number when he gets old enough. I mean, he's that much of a game changer. And I'm actually, the more I think about it, the more I love that he's going in game four. Let's go get this thing. Yeah. So, you know what? That makes me kind of think about the whole uh, betonline.ag. Like, I wonder what they're saying about this game. So, let's go and look it up. Uh, I mean, let's look at MLB. It's really easy site to uh, look up. So, let's look at MLB series. So, um, yeah, the Astros are favorites. I'm just saying. Uh, There you go. Money line is uh, negative 360, which means that they are favorite. And the uh, White Sox are uh, plus 290. So tell us a little bit about betonline.ag. So we're back in better than ever. And all hours are on the gridiron as teams are back for another football season. If you were paying attention this weekend to pro football, you saw some crazy things happen. Even in college football, you had the upset of the Crimson Tide at College Station where the Aggies of A&M beat Nick Saban and it was a great victory for them. But with this new and updated interface, even more odds, props, and contests, or if you're watching Texas blow a lead to Oklahoma, BetOnline continues to be the number one source for everything football. Head to the website to use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Don't forget to use your promo code Locked On to receive your bonus. From football, basketball, baseball, boxing, right to your favorite, favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available in the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your sports. Bet online where the game starts. All right. Apparently, I was looking at today's game as if today's game was going to go for it, and uh, the money line's <laughs> a little bit different. Uh, I don't. Oh, why. was that was that the game that was supposed to be played today that you yeah. were looking at? Yeah, so I don't know. Uh, maybe I was looking at the wrong thing, but um, looking at tomorrow's game, Tuesday, October, or today's game, October 12th, uh, at, it has McCullers versus Rodon, and they have the White Sox at negative 115. Really? And the Astros at uh, positive 105. So, oh, you know what odd. that means. Ah, you that know what that means, means. That means Astros fans uh, don't, don't. No, I'm not going to say it. I want people saying, well, Eric said to go bet on the Astros and the Astros lose. We need to go. I'm not doing that. Well, hold on. So, so the, yeah. Okay. So you said the, the Astros are, the Astros are plus 104. The White Sox are minus 115, right? Yeah. That's what I'm looking at. Okay. Well, Hey man. um, I don't know what I was looking at earlier. So uh, uh, you, that's okay. I think I was looking at today's game, but I, I don't understand why the Astros be favored with uh, Urquidy on the mound versus Lance <laughs> McCullers. I mean, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I don't know. That's 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 rather odd, isn't it? Maybe maybe they know the baseball gods are not happy with the White Sox right now. I mean, oh well, yeah, it's, it doesn't matter. But I, like I said in the, uh, the last podcast, I'm I'm going to favor the Astros because I think that they'll take care of business, especially with Lance McCullers on the mound. And especially if they don't do that, then they'll go ahead and go home and take care of business with um, Lance with uh, Fran Valdez on the mound. But um, Greenkey did a great job the other day, and I, I know that Christian Javier did a good job the other day. But one thing that this does, this extra rainout day, is it gives the bullpen a day to rest. I know one one uh, White Sox pitcher we're not going to see is probably Michael Kopech. Uh, he pitched two and one-thirds innings. I doubt we'll see him uh, any time until maybe uh, – yeah, I don't, I don't know if we'll see him again. Yeah, we probably kinda, won't. I mean, I think there would have to be a game five for us to see Kopech again. But I think also I just would say in the future um, we need to use Grinky in a clean inning to start and not with people on. Uh, I don't, it wasn't I don't, his fault. he pitched good. And even no, uh, no, he did. Dusty Baker said he pitched, he had, he pitched good. They liked the way he pitched and uh, they, no, he they did, actually, but let I, him, they, they pitched him um, that long because they felt like he, he pitched long enough. So yeah, I know what you're saying though. Yeah, no, I'm just saying I would prefer him doing that. And as we continue this podcast, the Rays have tied it up five to five. Yeah. And so we'll see. 
this podcast is going to so, end and we're not going to know the end. <laughs> so one thing that I forgot to mention in yesterday's podcast is Yumi Garcia is uh, known as a uh, right-handed specialist. He, You can only really pitch him against right-handed pitchers because this year in the regular season, he had a uh, he limited right-handers to a 583 OPS and left-handers had a 843 OPS. So that makes it very confusing on why you brought him in against the left-handed hitter. And uh, apparently Dusty Baker said that uh, he warms up quickly. So that's why he brought him in because he can get loose quicker. And someone someone, someone was talking about on the radio today how Dusty Baker knew it was going to be Garcia, Garcia, and Garcia. And so that's why he put him in there. I'm like, that's not why you put him in there. Um, but but that just, I mean, that's yeah. what I'm saying, Eric. There were just some moves at the certain times of the game that just really were head scratchers. Yeah, like this and, was his quote about that. He's like, well, he walks him and then all hell breaks, breaks loose. Well, all hell broke loose anyway. So what's the point? The thing is, he put him back out there after he gave up that tank shot to center field. That was even more like, why would you? Like, he just gave up this bomb to a guy that doesn't hit home runs. Oh. And the guy, the um, Grandal hit a home run off of a, a fastball, I believe. He threw him three fastballs. Yeah. So, yeah, you gave the guy his pitch. Like I said. The game's over with. Right. We can't yeah, go back and reverse back anything. I know. It's just those are the things that if you look in Dusty's past that have followed him up to this point. Questionable decisions about pitchers in the game. And I haven't heard a single person talk about this, but you and I saw it. It looked like Brent Strom was telling him to wait when he pulled Luis Garcia. Now, he may have been talking about something completely different, but he was on the phone and he was looking at Dusty saying, wait, 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 wait. And then Dusty walks up the stairs. I don't know if Dusty didn't hear him. That may not even be what was going on. I would like right. to know what, what that was actually was. But it sure looked like Brent Strong was trying to say, OK, hold on, Dusty, let him pitch, you know, whatever. But it's neither yeah. here nor there. It happened. Just right. head scratching things, things that make you go. Hmm. So this is a must win game for the White Sox. Uh, Carlos Rondon. Had a um, he he uh, has dominated against the Astros this year. We'll talk about him in a second. But the last time McCullers actually pitched at Guaranteed Rate Field, which is weird, a name was on July 16th. Uh, he pitched seven innings of one run ball with two hits, ten strikeouts, and a seven one Astros victory. Nice. And uh, Rondon, he uh, he uh, last time he pitched against the Astros was July 18th at home. He pitched seven innings, uh, one hit, ten strikeouts. He has a 0.64 ERA over two stri starts versus the Astros this season. I believe it was 14. It was 18 strikeouts and 14 innings, if I remember the correct. And it, th this should be basically a pitching duel. This is not going to be the same thing that we saw unless, unless Rodon, Rodon is not exactly. I healthy. don't. I don't think we're going to get the Rodon that that he's. He's not even throwing 92 right now. He's throwing 90, 91. That's a huge drop off from 96. And when you, and when you throw fastballs from 96 to 90, 91, this is a fastball hitting team, Eric. I, unless Rodon had had some kind of like, I don't know, like some injection in his shoulder to, to help him, you know, like a quarter zone shot, not like steroids, but like a quarter zone shot where he's got his mobility back or something. I just don't see it happening. Right. I would be shocked if Rodon comes out and lasts more than four innings. I just, I just think the Astros tee off on them, and if they do, they better score a lot of runs because, um, I don't know that I trust our bullpen right now. I'll be honest. Right. So I saw this from Astros feature, uh, so I'm going to give him credit for this. But um, he put out like uh, how McCullers has done on uh, days of rest. And uh, in 2021, so on four days of rest, he has a 3.97 ERA. On five days of rest, he has a 3.16 ERA. And on six plus days of rest, he has a 1.99 ERA. So uh, I don't know exactly how many days of rest uh, this would have been. 
uh, if you want to do the calculations and figure out what that was. But that's um, that's pretty. Uh, this I think we should see a pretty fresh and a pretty motivated uh, yeah. color out there to get the job done because this this is the moment he wants. He wanted he wants to be that guy in a big game getting that big win to send the Astros to the ALCS. And so we'll see what happens. So it's been six days, six, six days will be uh, tomorrow will be the sixth day. So yeah, that's, that's, that's probably why Astros feature put that up there. And I didn't realize that man, six days. It didn't seem like that. It, it seems like it was a lot sooner, but man, this has been a good discussion. I'm talking about get the whole to trash talk out of the way. No pun intended, actually pun intended. And, um, Hoping the Astros come in here and take care of business and shut the White Sox down. You know, they can get some discounted tickets. Maybe they come down and watch the ALCS. Want to hang? Actually, tomorrow will be the fifth day. You don't count the actual day of the start. Oh, okay. Well, I was counting the day of the start plus. Yeah. Okay. No. Okay. Well, hey, five, six. I'm, he's on I was full doing rest. In my head. I'm like, wait, no, there's no way. <laughs> there's no way possible. So, uh, yeah, but I think the Astros are definitely going to be motivated to do this because, you know, they're tired of this. They're tired of being booed. They're, but actually, it hasn't phased them. And they've actually excelled in these situations so i think what the white Sox brought in that first game was like we got our backs against the wall let's put all we we got in let's put all our chips in and they did that and uh, michael kopech came in he pitched great innings then you had that to to pair whatever his name and is, they used in. they used the umpire to their advantage i mean they 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 took advantage of that missed called strike and he took it deep i mean you got to give him credit they they yeah. use the umpire's bad calls to their advantage, so there's something to be said about that. I I still can't get that Grandal smirk off off he, out of my mind after that. Oh, it was just good base running. At at the end of the day, that was a Mark DeRosa on MLB Network said. Although I don't like the rule, and I believe he should have been called out. That was a veteran move. That's what a veteran does, and. You know, sometimes as a vet, you got to play a little dirty and it's not against the rules. So, I mean, whatever. There, There's a lot of other things that could have gone their way that didn't. And so we're moving past that and we're moving on, right? Yeah. So I, I think that the Astros, even though that they lost, that they still scored six runs. So the offense is still there. They've just got to figure out a way to get their pitching back on, on track. And six to seven innings from McCullers. I think that'll fix that. You just don't need to get to the, yeah. uh, I don't want to say the weaker part of your bullpen. I but- would love to see McCullers, Stanek, Graveman, Presley. I really want the Stanek, Graveman, Presley thing going. I don't care what what the lead is. Just, yeah, just have that, those yes. guys, and don't worry about the other guys. We don't want to see, we don't want to see Rayleigh. No more Rayleigh. <laughs> no. Serious. I'm going to pray against Rayleigh, Rayleigh right now. I'm going to pray <laughs> against Rayleigh right now. I love you, Rayleigh, but we're praying. Anyways, um, I'm, yeah. Uh, but yeah, just so much happened in that game. So hopefully, all the bad juju's out of the Astro system. Hopefully, all the the umpire. We don't have the umpire behind that plate. No, he I'm won't not, be. I, I won't <laughs> even speak his name anymore. I think uh, Astros fans have given him enough credit already. So let's let's hopefully he's not he's not. I know he's not going to be behind the plate anymore. But let's just move on with this series. Let's flush it down the drain. And let's make sure that McCullers goes out there and pitches his game out, his uh, his heart out, and, and that this is the moment he's been waiting for. And guys, make sure that you make the Locked On Astros podcast your first listen every day. Make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube, and make sure you give us a like, uh, if, and make sure you go ahead and listen to the audio version, Odyssey, Apple, Spotify. Um, um, there's just all these different, I didn't even know we're on, um, Amazon. There's just like all oh, these yeah. different, th- Everywhere. different way, ways to listen to the Locked on Astros podcast. So why Mars. aren't you doing it on a daily basis? Okay. I'm not listening to it on Mars. Are you listening on Mars? I don't there think could you are, be right. people on Mars listening to us. <laughs> All right. With that, uh, we're going to go ahead and end the podcast, and we'll be back tomorrow with a uh, post-game show, hopefully, uh, we're talking about the Astros' victory over the Chicago White Sox. We'll be celebrating our fifth straight ALCS um, uh, trip, and go Astros, and we'll talk to you tomorrow.